Hey everyone, thanks for your time as always. There were a few news items reported since the last update, but otherwise the attention is still on Artemis 2 preparations and options for Artemis 3. Now that NASA has a ship date for the SLS core stage in mind, what's left to get it ready to roll onto the barge in a month? And as we see Starship make test flight progress, the uncertainty about everything else associated with Artemis 3 is keeping the focus on questions about possibilities and feasibility. NASA Kennedy Space Center Public Affairs posted a social media update about environmental control system testing with a few pictures. The ECS provides conditioned air to the mobile launcher and the Orion SLS vehicle when they are at Pad 39B for day-to-day -day work activities. During hazardous operations, in particular propellant loading of the two SLS liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen stages, ECS provides inert nitrogen and helium purge gases to the different enclosed compartments on the vehicle and the different interfaces slash connections from the ground to the vehicle. Upgrades to the environmental control system were tested as a part of the multi-element verification and validations between the connected 39B and Mobile Launcher 1 systems at the pad. An updated checklist of the major areas of testing was also posted. Testing is ongoing for all of these areas, along with reviews of the results so far. The Mobile Launcher is now expected to remain out at Pad 39B until the midsummer. Early in the week, NASA PAO also posted a shot from Talus Alenia Space Italy, or TAZI, showing the welded barrel of the Habitation and Logistics Outpost Module, or HALO, being moved to a static load test stand in Turin, Italy. After the testing is satisfactorily completed, the structure will be transported to Northrop Grumman's facility in Gilbert, Arizona. That's in the Phoenix metro area, where outfitting of the module will begin. This new picture and a previous one from the opposite end show the welded barrels and the base of the two radial docking ports. The ends of the module will be bolted on. The inter-element adapter will go on one end, which will be where the module is eventually mated to the power and propulsion element. The other end will have the third axial docking port, where the IHAB module will eventually be attached on the Artemis IV mission. I also got a high-level update about one of the Artemis II watch items, which was open issues remaining from Artemis I. With respect to exploration ground systems, the response says, quote, Some issues reported at the post-flight assessment review are tied to completion of Mobile Launcher 1 and integrated systems verification and validation testing at the pad, which are not yet complete. Those include issues related to launch imagery, launch loads and environments, post-mission repair, and foreign object debris. The team expects to close them this summer, unquote. So that provides some perspective on the verification and validation testing previously mentioned. The next line in the response says, quote, the remaining open Orion Artemis I post-flight issue is related to the heat shield char loss investigation. NASA expects closure of the root cause this summer, unquote. That's the well-discussed heat shield investigation that is being independently reviewed right now. And then for the launch vehicle, the last line of the response says, quote, SLS is assessing and resolving anomalies related to debris and flight safety system component environment exceedances with closure actions in work, unquote. That's referring to vibrational and debris shedding in-flight anomalies with SLS during the Artemis I launch. As usual now, there's very little elaboration or explanation included. So those issues are being worked, but still have not been closed. With the recent milestones and updates, let's take a quick look at the big picture. For Artemis II, we're watching for an update on the Orion heat shield investigation and forward plan. Vacuum testing is coming up, last we heard at the beginning of July. The core stage is expected to be at Kennedy Space Center by the end of July, and then the mobile launcher would roll back to the vehicle assembly building probably sometime after that to get ready for stacking the Artemis II vehicle. We're still waiting to get a more definite set of plans for when stacking would begin, but that's probably dependent on the status of Orion. For Artemis III, we're watching to see more progress on production of the flight hardware, 
but given the latest manifest plans, which were announced going on six months now, all the questions about how realistic that is remain. Recently, NASA exploration leadership talked about looking into alternate missions, given one of the goals is to fly more Artemis missions more often. That's not only a goal, but oversight panels like the Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel have also noted the risks with flying on an irregular cadence with long gaps between missions. An analogy was made about the backup plans to having a spare tire in your car. But if we go with that analogy, does NASA have a spare tire today? And if not, what does NASA have to do to make a spare tire and when will it be available? I talked about the Starship calendar last time, but how about this Earth orbit rendezvous and docking idea that was reported a few weeks past? Is that feasible today? It's not just a question of whether a Starship HLS prototype could be ready to fly in two years, but what is feasible or realistic for Orion and SLS? One of the reasons that the Gateway orbit is a near rectilinear halo orbit is because of the less harsh thermal environment. The CIS Lunar Staging Orbit studies a decade ago noted that the constellation Low Lunar Orbit plans would require more than radiators for Orion. For a LEO mission like the original Orion ISS concept, additional cooling would be needed. How much work would it be to add that and certify it for a one-off mission? And how long would it take to do that? Similarly with SLS, retaining the outer mold line of the current Block 1 vehicle would minimize large-scale modifications to Mobile Launcher 1 and probably would minimize differences with the flying characteristics of the Block 1 crew configuration. But would it still be necessary to go through a design analysis cycle for that configuration? The mass properties might still be different, and the structural dynamics might be different with a rigid mass simulator versus a real ICPS loaded with cryogenic liquids. How much work would it be to Delta certify that vehicle for a one-off mission? And how long would that take? Just as SpaceX would only have two years to complete all the demonstrations and certifications of its lunar lander and lunar ascent spacecraft, NASA would also only have two years to certify Orion and SLS for a LEO mission and also to plan and prepare for that. The question is not just if this backup plan is feasible, but when is the earliest it could realistically be feasible? So those were the Artemis news notes from the past week. In the meantime, the EGS and SLS programs are moving ahead with plans to deliver the Artemis II core stage to Kennedy Space Center in about a month. As noted in the last video, a week ago, NASA posted an advisory for the upcoming rollout of Core Stage 2 at Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans East. The advisory said that rollout is now planned for mid-July and a picture of the stage taken in early June was published. This was the first news on the stage in four months. The previous was a statement provided on February 15th that noted that final integrated functional testing of the stage was completed on January 23rd. Looking at the recent picture, we see that at a high level, the stage is still configured for final assembly and functional test. So there's still some work to be done to prepare it for transportation to KSC for the Artemis II launch. The inside of the stage needs to be closed out and all of the external doors and coverings need to be attached. The closeouts need to be completed first because the stage needs to be rotated around to attach all those doors and fairings and blankets and also to finish some of the detailing of the thermal protection system that covers the stage. That statement says that FIFT, or Final Integrated Functional Testing of the Stage, was completed in late January, and under different circumstances, the first unit was configured for shipping and rolled out of the factory two weeks later. Circumstances are almost entirely the opposite four and a half years later with the central difference being this unit is not driving the Artemis II schedule the way the first one was for Artemis I. Typically, a break of configuration review is conducted at the end of a major milestone test like FIFT to make sure that everyone is on the same page to move on to the next milestone. Systems could need to be rechecked, parts could need to be changed out, something could come up in the intervening five months, so it's possible the break of configuration review remains to be held. 
Once the go-ahead to disconnect the test equipment is given, then prime contractor Boeing will begin doing that and breaking down the horizontal access kits inside the dry sections of the stage. The forward skirt area is open in the front and is more open-ended, but the inner tank and engine section have intricate scaffolding set up inside to provide access to all the equipment and components. That has to be disassembled into scores of individual pieces and removed from those enclosed compartments. Once all of the temporary work equipment is removed, then access doors can be attached to enclose those areas. The engine section barrel and forward skirt each have one access door and the inner tank has two. All of that has to be done and any other external test or handling equipment has to be disconnected from the stage to then allow the access platform surrounding the outside to be pulled away. That provides the clearances around the stage to allow it to be rotated around, which enables the rest of the coverings to be attached and the rest of the TPS detailing to be completed. Beyond the access doors, coverings for the systems tunnel and around the engines need to be installed for transportation. The systems tunnel runs essentially the length of the stage from the forward skirt to the engine section, holding all of the cabling that carries power and data between the equipment positioned inside the stage around the propellant tanks. The wire harnesses are set up on base plates that are bolted to the structure of the stage. That all has to be set up and checked out with functional tests. Then, at this point, after all the tests are completed, pre-shipment cover plates are put over the cables. For barge transportation, we may see the same mixture of flight cover plates with foam on the outside and red GSE cover plates, likely for areas that need repeated access and repeated opening and closing before flight. The other set of coverings enclose the engine section and boat tail. Four sets of fairings go around the outside and four engine blankets cover the engine holes on the bottom. Boeing ended up making a set of transportation covers for the engine holes during the time the first core stage was at Stennis Space Center for the Green Run Design Verification Campaign in 2020 and 2021. All the coverings will allow the areas to be kept dry and relatively cool with air conditioning provided by portable purge units during the trip. While the stage is being rotated to put on the fairings and covers, final TPS work before transportation will also be completed. We can still see primer and cork on the outside of the stage in spots in the early June picture, and those will need to be covered, as this will be the first extended exposure for the stage outside. In particular, the cork on the outside of much of the engine section and boat tail needs to be coated with white paint that provides a moisture barrier. This time, we should not see any foil on the back end of the stage, which was only needed for green run static test firings. Any remaining spray on foam insulation work that needs to be performed would also be done. Some areas of bolted flanges and ramps might have to wait until most of the scaffolding is out of the way for sprays or trimming. Once all of that is complete, one of the final activities, while the stage is in the final assembly area, is to perform weight and center of gravity measurements. A combination of ground and water transportation is required to move the stage from inside the production factory in New Orleans to inside the vehicle assembly building at KSC. At this point, the stage is lying on indoor factory transporters. But after all the covers and doors are put on, it is ready to be put on the overland ground transporters. That has to be done in another building with two heavy cranes, and I'll run through a preview of that work in a future video as we get closer to the upcoming rollout. Thanks for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative. We'll continue to follow the core stage transportation plans as they get more firm. And obviously the questions about Artemis 3 and the alternatives and what's possible when um, those questions aren't going anywhere either. So stay tuned.